Nice. Nice. Okay. It's working. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all I had to do. That's all I had to fucking do. Reset. <laughs> Restart the fucking PC. Turn it on and off again. Oh my god. Hey, yo, want to be any louder? God damn. Okay. Oof. Um, okay, first of all, went to here. Um, go into here, then here, and then, uh, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I finally did it. Fucking hell. <clears throat> the sound, the sound is sounding. Once again. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has been DPA approved. <laughs> Fuck me. Alright, alright. We're all set. We're all set. We're all good. Sound sounds. It's not painful anymore. <laughs> Yay. Uh, is that Monsieur Clamy? Oh, mon dieu! Damn... Catalan? Wow, can't believe I'm <laughs> streaming for... <laughs> wow, crazy! <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you so much for your patience. Oh, it's midday already. Where on earth is that featherhead? Well, well, well. Look who finally decided to get up. Haven't you heard what they say about the early bird falcon? Ugh, too early for worms. Pass the Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> There'll be time for that later. We've got some business to handle first. Business? A letter arrived while you were sleeping. I haven't opened it yet. It's probably just more junk mail. Go ahead, Sparrowson. You may have the honors. Eh, all right. <coughs> Dear Monsieur Falcon, I am writing to you today because my daughter, Dame Caterlin, has been arrested for a crime she did not commit. She is being held at a at La, Concier La Conciergerie uh, prison in the charge on the charge of murder, no less. Her trial is in three days' time. I would be greatly in your debt if you would offer her your legal aid. Yours truly, Senor. Si ah, Senor. Senor. Pour toi de miau. Of the Demiao estate. <laughs> well, this is quite something. I know! You, your first serious client in months. Not just that, the Demiao estate, estate is known for its exuberant wealth. Even if we cannot do much for Dame Caroline, uh, his lordship would still reward us handsomely for our efforts. Wow! Oh wait, I can't play it. <gasps> wait, I can! Ha ha! 
<laughs> so I suppose you intend to de on defending damn Caroline Caroline in court? Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> I think not, Sparrowson. The fate of a fat cat bourgeois is none of my concern. Pass the Cabernet Sauvignon already. What? With all respect, Falcon, you've been doing nothing for the past two weeks. Anything would be better than another day of thumb twiddling. Still... Come on! Let's be protective members of society! No! <laughs> no. I've made up my mind. Okay. Fine. Can we at least play some cards to pass the time? Now there is a marvelous idea. But what game? We don't really have enough players for Tap to Rock or Seago. Hmm... <gasps> I know! There's this game I learned at university called Jacques Noir. Jacques Noir? That sounds dubious. No, no, it's a real game! Let me tell you how it works. You draw cards from this deck to get as close to 21 as possible. Blackjack. <laughs> Without going over. Call heads if you want another card, instead if you don't want any more. You are aiming to get as close to 21 as possible without going over. Uh, sounds good. Deal me. Oh my god, we're actually- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's go! Is that a 10? Hit me. Fuck. Oh wait, that's 12. Hit me. Hit me! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> what do you think? Are you getting the gist of it? Uh, Not quite, let's play again. <laughs> Still trying to get the, a grip on some of the rules. Let's go again. Okie dokie! <laughs> hit me! Stop shuffling, hit me! Hit! Hit! Nine, okay. Twenty? Yeah, I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chilling. Uh huh. Let's go. <laughs> what do you think? Are you getting the gist of it? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got the animal of it. All right, now we can make this interesting. How do you feel about a little wager? Sounds good. What do you have in mind? One flank for per round. Two. No, no. I was thinking of something else. I'm intrigued. Go on. We play one round. If I win, you have to take on Dam Carolyn's case. Sounds like that sounds like quite a hefty wager. What do I get if I win? Hmm. If you win, I got it. If I win, you must. Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that is so fucked. This is all so fucked. Take a vow of silence. <laughs> you must take a vow of silence. Not a peep out of you for one week. A, a, a whole week? I don't think I could manage a day! Frankly, I don't think you would manage five minutes. But if you manage it, the office would actually be peaceful for a change. All right, all right, all right, okay. Okay, let's play. <laughs> all righty, hit me! Four, 11, fuck! No fucking shot. <laughs> well, looks like I won, how about that? What, no way, you cheated. You didn't shuffle the cards properly. Let's go again, two out of three. How does that American proverb go, uh, Falcon? Don't hate the player, hate the game. Ugh, this is my punishment for gambling on a made-up card game, isn't it? Fine, we'll take the case. Excellent. My derrier was, was getting tired from all this sitting around. Oh, but I better file away Signor, uh, Signor de Miao, de Miao's letter first. One moment, Falcon. Wow! Evidence folder. Requested legal aid for the. Oh, okay, 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 okay. 
You may access the evidence folder at any time by clicking the suitcase symbol. Ah, nearly forgot my wallet. I wouldn't want to lose that. Again, I recall you you I recall you, you losing it at the New Year's party and at Christmas. Yes, all right. No need to make a list. Yay! 20 monies. You may see how much money he is carrying at any time by clicking on the wallet symbol. Let's make a move. Whoa! Welcome to the map screen! From here, you can travel to any listed area by clicking on a location, name, or a location node. Areas marked with a clock symbol take a whole day to visit. Areas with no symbol can be visited freely. Oh. Oh! Oh ho ho! Oh ho 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 ho! For centuries, the infamous conciergerie, uh, conciergerie prison has detained the accused and the condemned alike. A sign on the door reads the aviary, eternity offices. No cases too big or too small. No junk mail. This is so cute. <laughs> Falcon and Sparrison step into the stone-cold foyer of the conciergerie prison. Sullen-faced guards and visitors linger beneath the medieval archways. Ah, the conciergerie. They say this is the finest prison in the whole of France. The outer walls are impenetrable. The cells are spotless. The guards... Eh. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, good day, monsieur. I'm here to see Dame Caroline de Mao. De, 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 de Miao. I am due to represent her in court. <laughs> this is so- the sound is so cute. Ah, you're a lawyer, huh? Fine, fine. Follow me. Well, what are you waiting for? Keep up. Huh. <sighs> <sighs> My papa hasn't forgotten about me, has he? <laughs> Damn Catherine de Miao, I presume. You've arrived! The fantastic lawyer, Monsieur Falcon, and his petit uh and his petit assistant Sparrowson. The lady is knowledgeable. Don't Don't talk like that, Sparrowson. Sorry. My papa told me that he would only hire the best lawyers in town. I'm flattered. But they weren't available at such short notice, so he hired the first people in the address directory. Oh. <laughs> you see, Falcon, I told you listing under aviary attorney would pay off. Let's get down to business. Damn, Caroline, would you fill us in on some details? Your father's letter was a little brief. I can do my best. What is it you want to know? Uh, what happened on the night of the murder? What exactly happened on the night of the murder? Ooh, let me think. It was Friday evening. Me and my papa have arrived at Chateau uh, Clinier. The home of Great Baron Roar We <laughs> My Papa spent all evening talking with Monsieur Grenwy and the Baron about business stuff. Business stuff Well, the three of them own a railway company together. So all through dinner they were talking about company shares and investments, but I didn't really understand most of it. But after dinner, this man with a camera took our photograph. That was a lot more fun. Sorry, man with a what took your what? Camera! It's a very new gadget. A tiny bug sits in a box with a tiny paintbrush and paints your picture very fast. In 10 minutes, poof, you have a perfect, a PERFECT picture! <laughs> wow, 
Wow, technology is amazing! Wow. I don't think the lady's explanation is right, Sparrowson. Pshaw, let me believe! Still, the camera sounds like a very special device. I'll make a note of it. Yay! Photographer named Ro 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 Robitio attended the banquet. Okay. Please continue, damn Cataline. So after we, ha we had the uh, uh, photograph, I went to the gardens to get some air. And that's when I found the body of Monsieur Grenoui. It was all ripped open. A housemaid saw me standing over the froggy monsieur and called for help. And then the police arrived. Before I could say anything, I ended up here. It was such a blur. It must have been terrifying. Oh, it wasn't so bad. My papa taught me how to be a brave cat. Was there something else you wanted to ask, Monsieur Falcon? Uh, who was there at the evening? Or that evening? Hi, Rose. You have the best eyes. <laughs> yes, yes you do. Damn, Caroline. Who attended the banquet that evening? Well, there was me and my papa. My dearest mama couldn't ha couldn't make it. She she also couldn't handle parties. And there was Baron R Roar. Oh no, <laughs> I've never had to deal with this sound before. Uh. Pronunci pronunciation. Pronunciation. Uh. Oh, it's or. Ah, you are. You're a bird! Uh. Sure. Goy? Goy? Or goy. Goy? Damn, that's... Goy? 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 That is crazy. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> who was host- who hosted the dinner and his housemaid Cooleen, I think she was called. Of course, there was Monsieur Grenouille. Well, until, you know, he died. And there was Monsieur Robitio de Robinio. <laughs> I love that name. The man with the camera. But he was only there for a little while. Hmm. I think that was all. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Did you see anything sus? Huh? Damn, Catalina. Did you see anything suspicious that evening? Suspicious? Like, uh, maybe a guy lurking in the shadows or a, a bloody murder weapon? Monsieur Falcon, I do believe you're looking for an easy answer. Mm, you got me. I did not see anything, I'm afraid. The evening was very normal. The food was delicious. The conversation was boring. It was all very ordinary until the incident. I see. Wait! Chanto! <laughs> Falcon, you missed something of huge importance. I did. Damn, Catherine, you said the food was delicious. But you didn't say what food it was! You and your damn stomach. Hmm, let me see. We had poached red herring to start. Garnished with garlic butter. Go on. Then a marbled steak. Served perfect bloody rare. Glorious! Falcon, write this down! What? This can't possibly be relevant to the case. Write it all down, please! For me! Fine. 
fine. <laughs> Sparrowson, remind me not to let you talk to clients on an empty stomach. Oh, come to think of it, I did find it a, stri a little strange that we weren't given any cutlery. No cutlery? Even for the steak? No? You would think that the great baron of Chateau Clinier would have go gorgeous silverware, but there was none to be seen. That is a little peculiar. Was there anything you wanted to know, Monsieur Falcon? No? I think that'll be all. So what's the plan now, Falcon? The way I see it, we have two tasks. We should head to Chateau Clinier and try to see... Yeah, and try to see the scene of the murder for ourselves. And we should try to track down this supposed photographer, Monsieur Robitio de Robinio. Two days for two tasks? Eh, seems doable. But we should get... But we should get head back and get some rest first. <laughs> we have a lot of work ahead of us. Wait, Monsieur Falcon, before you go, you do believe my story, don't you? Eh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> That's cold, Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I love these. Damn, Catherine, Monsieur Grenwy, Baron Or Borgoy. These names are all getting a little bit confusing, aren't they? Not particularly. Well, it is for me. I'm gonna start compiling a Facebook so that I can keep track of who everyone is. A what? A Facebook! It's a collection of people's names, pictures, and descriptions in one easy-to-carry catalog. Uh, I think I understand. The name could use a little work, though. Sparrowson has started compiling a Facebook. Oh. JJ Falcon, the aviary attorney himself. Sparrowson. Falcons, suave and courageous lackey. What a handsome fellow. <laughs> Bertoire de Miao, the wealthy father of Dame Cataline. Uh, Bertoire hired us to defend Dame Cataline in court. Quark, an ill mannered jailkeeper, seems to feel disgusted for criminals <laughs> and for animals in general. <laughs> <laughs> A peak discriminator. <laughs> um, Catherine de Miao, the elegant bourgeois daughter of Signor Pertois de Miao. She has been. Ah! <laughs> I missed. I missed all of it. She has been accused of murdering Monsieur Grenwy, the froggy. Businessman who was found murdered at Chateau Crinier. Crinier, sorry. A coll colleague of Retoir and Rorgoy. That's a difficult one. That is a very difficult one. You can access a list of people you have met at any time by clicking. Let's make a move. It's a new dawn! It's a new day! It's a new la- Okay. There's two places, but you can also make a quick save at any time by selecting save and quit from the pause menu. You can access the pause menu by clicking on the cog symbol in the upper left corner, right over here. Oh, that you, that's being covered by chat. Or by pressing the escape key. Okay, 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 alright, okay, alright, okay, okay, alright. <laughs> Uh, let's start with here. Falcon and Sparrowson enter the courtyard outside Chateau Crenier. Uh, people with dirty clothes and gaunt faces linger around the building's shadows. Oh, <gasps> excuse me. 
Excusez-moi, messieurs. I don't mean to be a pain, but my little girl and I are sick and starving, see? <coughs> I don't suppose you happen to have some spare change? You have 20 francs in your wallet. What will you do? Uh, see, if I give nothing, there could be a consequence. <laughs> I'll give you one. Here you go. Stay safe, madame. Many thanks to you, messieurs. That was pretty generous of you, Falcon. Times are tough. Making sure a mother and child have something to eat is the least I can do. But what am I doing, standing here and moralizing? Come on, Sparrowson. We've got business to attend to. Falcon and Sparrowson step into the pristine wood-paneled foyer of Chateau Clinier. Whoa! Look at this place! Baron Ro Ro <sighs> This is gonna kill me. Baron Roar Roar Goyi must be loaded. More than loaded. When it comes to lucrative investments, the Baron is a legend. Factories, chocolate shops, hotels, railroads. The Baron owns a little bit of everything this side of the Seine. Is he here right now? Yes. He's a smug looking chap in the with the impressive mane. But we must approach a man of his stature with tact and finesse. Hey! Baron! We'd like a word! How's that? Sparrowson, you have the finesse of an, in, an inebriated warthog. Eh, you can thank me later. I think I got his attention. <clears throat> oh, you're a lion. Bobby, I, I am not good with na French, clearly. Did I hear my name? The great... Baron Rorgoyi, property owner extraordinaire at your service. And who might you fellows be? More investigators? No, we're attorneys. Not quite. I'm a private attorney, JJ Falcon, and this is my associate, Sparrowson. Lawyers, eh? You know, you aren't the first to have passed through here today. Oh? Yes, yes. This jumpy, twitchy fellow came by this morning. <laughs> ask the bunch of, of... Holy... Asked a bunch of questions, then hopped away before he heard the answers. Most curious. So, a rabbit? Hmm... Do you know who he was, Sparrowson? Perhaps. I have a hunch. Sorry. I, I have a hutch. Oh, sorry. Hunch. We'll be seeing him at the trial. A friend of yours? Hmm, something like that. So what may I do for you, messieurs? We're doing some... We're doing some research on Monsieur Renoui. The frog was killed here on Friday evening. Of course, of course. Such a tragedy. He was a good friend and a loyal business partner. I suppose you messieurs will be wanting to see the crime scene for yourself? Actually, yes. That would be fantastic. Well, be my guest. You'll find the garden where the murder occurred through the back doors. You may also be interested in the lounge on the second floor. Third door to the right. That would be where we gathered for the group photograph prior to the, uh... Unfortunate... Incident. Oh, Can we see the finished photograph? I'm afraid not. It is to my understanding that the photograph must be developed before it can be viewed. It's a slow process. My own copy of the photograph is to be delivered in three days' time. Oh, wow, what a coincidence! That's when the trial starts. 
Oh, that's not good to us. The trial may be over by then. Nonetheless, we appreciate your hospitality. Thank you, Baron. <laughs> it's no trouble at all. I'll be here to see you out when you're done with your investigations. So, where shall we go first? Ooh. Uh, obviously, we want to check out... Uh, our froggy boy's previous location. <laughs> Unf unfortunate location. Dame Cataline said that she found Monsieur Grenouille on the stairs by the fountain. So this must be the very spot where the murder took place. Damn, bro never heard of Walmart photo lab. <laughs> yeah, crazy. If only. Hey, Falcon. Do the crime scene... Do the crime scene... Oh, hey, Falcon, do the crime scene investigation thing. The crime scene investigation thing? Yeah, you know, the thing where you get all eagle-eyed and analyze every object in excruciating detail. You mean search for evidence? Yeah, do that. That's not a bad suggestion. Wouldn't be the first time for the Parisian police F uh... It wouldn't be the first time the Parisian police have missed something right under their noses. In investigation mode, you are free to examine the scenery of the room. Click on an item of interest and Falcon will examine it in closer detail. When you have had enough, or when you, fi when you can find nothing else to examine, click on the X in the top right corner. Select an area to examine. Wow, let's look at the uh, the statues. Oh, another beautifully made horse statue. You know, my uncle ha once had a horse that refused to eat hay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yep. Eventually, we realized that it was just filling up on horse derfs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, terrible. <laughs> what about another one? A horse statue. This one has a goofy face. Huh, that reminds me of a joke. A horse walks into a bar, and the barkeep says, Why the long face? Yes, yes, we've all heard that one. What? No! The barkeep says you've got to stop coming here. You're drinking us under the stable. I think, I think it's time to rein in the horse jokes. <laughs> This fountain is <clears throat> This fountain is finely crafted. It's solid mar carved marble. It can't have been cheap. I see nothing but water in the bottom of the lower basin. Mm, it's a shame we can't see inside the upper basin from here. That would be a perfect place to quickly stash a murder weapon. That's actually not a terrible line of reasoning. We ought to wait. Uh, we ought to wait in to take a closer look. Just to be sure. Yeah, I suppose we should. Oh, I apologize. I wasn't being direct enough. What I meant to say was, Sparrowson, go wade into the fountain and take a closer look inside the upper basin. Me? No way! If you want to go waiting, do it yourself! I'm a respectable lawyer. You can't expect me to roll up my trousers and paddle around a fountain like a duck in a lake. Yeah, well, you don't pay me enough to justify getting my sweet threads wet! Look, there's only one reasonable way to settle this. We'll flip for it. Flip for it? Yep, I'll flip this one franc coin. You call the outcome. Get it wrong and you go for a swim. So, what'll it be? Heads or tails? Napoleon face or plant squiggles? Um, I hate Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> plant squiggles? It's called a wreath, Sparrowson. Sure, I'll bet on the plant squiggles. Here I go! It's heads! Oh, Should have gone with the old Emperor Falcon! Ah, fine! Hold my shoes. Falcon really should learn how to spot a rigged coin flip. 
<laughs> I almost feel bad for cheating. <laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> I love their dynamic, it's so good. Ah, you're back! Had a good swim? <laughs> no. I'm a bird, not a fish. But I did find a mystery item in the upper basin. It's no uh, murder weapon, though. A cigar! Oh, what's this? It's brown and sticky, and it smells weird. Don't tell me that you picked up a very wet cigar, cigar butt. Possibly belonging to Baron Rorgai. Correct. But that shouldn't be too surprising. It is his house after all. I'll stash it in the evidence folder just in case. Yay! Yippee! I don't have that sound. Fuck. Is there anything- Is there anything else we need to do here? Uh, check out the other statues. Baron Rogoyi certainly likes his horse statues. Oh, I don't mind the horse statues, but the little cherub people creep me out. Babies should be waddling, not attempting saddleless horseback riding. <laughs> uh, finely crafted horse statue. The main, <clears throat> the main must almost looks lifelike. Would you say it behooves you to stroke it? No. No, I would not. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Scanning. 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 Ah! Dried blood on the staircase. This must be where Monsieur Grenouille died. Hmm, do you see any bloody footprints? <gasps> oh! Oh! Or... Or, maybe, a name scrawled in blood, written in the frog's last breath? Wishful thinking. All I'm seeing here is a big sticky puddle. There's nothing to indicate that the body was moved or that the frog la uh, left a last minute clue. All I can make out from the bloody mess is that Monsieur Grenouille was attacked and killed on the staircase. Ha! <laughs> ah! Ein. Scanning, scanning, scanning. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're done here. Good call. But are you sure you don't want to take another dip? We still have time. Don't push your luck. <laughs> uh, was it the lounge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hello. Second floor. Third floor on the right. Uh, excuse. This must be the room where the photograph was taken. Psst. Hey, Falcon. Did you see that? See what? That housemate totally just did something shifty. Shifty? I think she just pocketed something from that drawer. You should totally call her out on it. Excuse me, mademoiselle. Yes? Are you two policemen? No, no. We're private attorneys. My name's JJ Falcon. And I'm Sparrowson. Oh, how rude of me. My name is Colleen... Oh, that's you. My name is Colleen Duhot. Duho? Duho. So, uh... What can I help you, messieurs, with today? We're investigating the murder that took place last week. Do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let me just grab a chair. Ah, <clears throat> that's better. Uh, what was it you wanted to ask? Mm, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> yes. We're looking for the room where the photograph was taken prior to the incident. Would you happen to know whether this is the right room? Oh, yes, you're in the right place. I saw the pho photography session for myself. Let's see... The cameraman was standing... Mm, just about where you're standing, actually, Monsieur Falcon. And where was the camera pointed? Right at the clock at the mantelpiece. The Baron insisted on using it that very location. Mm, now that I'm looking at it, 
Something isn't right about that clock. <gasps> I know! The painting on it totally clashes with the decor! I was thinking along more obvious lines. The clock has no hands. Oh, that clock hadn't... Oh, that clock has never had hands in all the years I've worked here. I think Baron Rogoyi just keeps it around as a conversation piece. Well, we're conversing about it, so I guess it's working. It's a peculiar, it's a peculiar detail, though. I'll make note of it. Wow. Is there something else you wanted to ask? Uh, something... Is there something we should know? You were a little nervous when we came in. You thought we were police officers. Is there something we ought to know? Uh, anything you need to confess? No, no! Uh, I'm supposed... I suppose I'm just a little nervous after all the drama of last week. Pressure, pressure her! Are you sure there wasn't anything that you're hiding? It's okay to tell us. We're defense attorneys. That means we help people get away with criminal acts. Right, and... Wait, what? No, that's not an accurate job description, Sparrowson. It isn't? Oh, what do we do then? I'll tell you later. Honestly, messieurs, I have nothing to hide. Was there something else you wanted to ask? <sighs> no further questions. Thank you, mademoiselle. You've been a huge help. <laughs> it's no problem, messieurs. Actually... There is something. I know you two saw me... ...stealing as you came in. I appreciate that you didn't give me the third degree about it. You see, I'm trying to save up to follow my dreams and... Well, never mind, I'm rambling. It's no problem, Mademoiselle. <clears throat> to be honest, we have a much larger crime to worry about. Although I should probably ask, I don't suppose you've been stealing anything else? Silverware, perhaps? Ah, uh, you know about that? Yeah, I suppose that was me. It started with a couple of teaspoons. I didn't think the Baron would miss those. But, uh, well, yeah, I suppose the habit got a little away with from me. Mm, that's one mystery solved, at least. <clears throat> I would appreciate it if you didn't tell the Baron. He's been really kind, and I would hate to break his trust. I see. So where to next, Big Bird? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's nowhere else. Did you, messieurs, have a good look around? I trust everything was in order. We had a good look. Thank you, Baron. But we actually have some questions for you. Please, ask away. I have nothing to hide. About your housemaid. We met your housemaid, Kuline de Hall. Uh, she's a courteous young lady, isn't she? Yeah, she's quite helpful. <laughs> yes, she was more than willing to help us with our investigation. Now I'm glad to hear it. Did you two want to ask something else? Uh, what happened to the the murder? Baron Rogoyi, I would like to ask about your activities on the night of the murder. Oh, oh am I in trouble? Well, uh, we'll see. <laughs> that remains to be seen. Does it now? I don't particularly care for your tone. I'm just asking questions, Baron. If you have nothing to hide, then you should be able to give a straight answer. Listen well, Garçon. I make more money in 10 minutes than you make in a week. I pay extortionate amounts of taxes to the government so that law luckies like you can keep your cozy jobs. And yet, 
You have the audacity to waltz into my own home and accuse me of being a murderer? You have 10 seconds to get off my property, or I will ensure that in the next trial you attend will be your own. <laughs> Don't say anything. What was it you told me when we went in? Let's act with tact and finesse. Shut up. What was it you called me? A uh, drunken warthog? I don't need this. I'm going back to the office. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Good shit. <laughs> that was fun. Let's see if we can uh, try again. <laughs> Back here already? I thought you wanted to meet the photographer. Come on, Falcon. Time's a wasting. Wow. So, this is the studio of the famous photographer. Shall we knock? Wait, there's a note on the door. <clears throat> the magnificent and marvelous artist, Monsieur Robito de Robinho, is currently out on an artistic expedition. He shall return when he muse when his muse sees fit. When his muse sees fit? What does that even mean? I think it me means that he's a pretentious bird brain. But in any case, the artist seems to be out. What shall we do now? Mm. Knock anyway. <laughs> we should knock anyway. Yeah, alright. I don't see the harm. Knock knock! Uber! Nope. Doesn't look like he's in, Falcon. <laughs> we should break in. We should. We should break in. What?! Are you serious?! Maybe. Monsieur JJ Falcon! I would have thought that a man of justice like yourself would be against such reckless displays of unlawful barbarism. You're right. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over. It's a brilliant suggestion! Stand back! I'm barging the door down! <laughs> Wait, just like that? Shouldn't we discuss this first? <laughs> <laughs> what in bird Jesus' name was that? You said you wanted to break in! I thought we could find an open window. I didn't think it would turn into a bird-sized cannonball. Well, now that we're head, now that we're here, we ought to make the most of it. <clears throat> this place is quite something. It's very... Swanky. I was gonna say ostentatious. It's just... That's just swanky talk for swanky. We don't have time for this. The sound of a door being smashed in could be drawing unwanted attention. <laughs> we should find everything, anything that may help our case and get out. <laughs> I love this game. This is so good. <laughs> I see a bourgeois tigr tigress on, in profile. I see paints, inks, and dyes. Not quite sure what the clear liquid in this bottle is. I could taste test it. You could, but we don't have time for a hospital visit right now, so let's not. I see a finely dressed dandy fellow upon a horse. More horses, huh? This appears to be a photograph of a ladder. Symbolic of climbing towards success, perhaps? Looks more like a stepladder than me! <laughs> we- we did it. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. 
There it is. Oh no, we're not getting into that old argument. <clears throat> this is a photograph of a castle somewhere in the countryside. You know, I once had an uncle who once fell off a castle rampart while on uh, guard duty. No, oh, sorry to hear that. Did he die? No, he got demoted. Ugh, terrible. A lighthouse? No. Wait, it's a man in a top hat. Actually, if I squint and turn my head sideways, it's a black smudge, Falcon. Uh, <laughs> this is a tiny photograph of what appears to be a jail cell. Oh, that reminds me. How illegal is this? You know, breaking and entering, rifling through a person's belongings. Uh, uh, it's cool, we're lawyers. <laughs> it's okay. A recently passed amendment allows for a proportionate amounts of property damage in the pursuit of criminal evidence. I don't think that's correct, but your use of legal jargon makes me have faith in your credentials. <laughs> Sounds like you're starting to learn the finer points of the French justice system. <laughs> Sparrows. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> this is a picture of a fence. Oh, this is a picture of a fence. It's a fancy photograph. It leaves the viewer defenseless. Out of all the pictures here, I could- I would pick it as my favorite. Okay, I'm done. No more fence puns. Picture of a sailing ship on a windy day. Uh, what else is there? The chandelier? A chandelier! Huh, you should get one of those in for the office. I don't have that- I don't have the money for that sort of luxury. Oh, I missed one. Beautiful picture of Paris skyline. Given the angle, this must have been taken from Notre Dame Cathedral itself. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I missed another one. A butterfly? Or maybe a moth? It's difficult to tell in black and white. Did I miss anything else? Mm, nope, we are all good. Let's go that way. Hey, Falcon! Look! What? It's just an easel. No, no! Look what's on the easel! Oh, wow. This must be the copy of the photograph from the evening of the murder. There's no question about it. I see a housemaid, Dame Caterline, and I think that's Monsieur Pretoire. Caroline's father. What shall we do? Do we just... take this? <laughs> the key... The... I mean, we're already... We're already committing chaos. Might as well, right? <laughs> We've come this far. May as well borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else we need to do here? <laughs> Alright, we're good. I think we're done snooping. Let's get out of here before we draw further attention to ourselves. Sounds good to me. <laughs> the French said it's okay. Uh-oh. Oh mon dieu! What happened to my door? Uh <laughs> Some kids did it. Little weasel types. We saw them. Yeah! Weasels! They were all like, let's break into this art guy's house! And we were like, no, weasels! You cannot do that because that would be illegal! And then they were like, we chased them off. That's the important thing. <clears throat> well, thank you, I suppose. Let's make a move. Trial day is approaching fast. Right, let's go. <laughs> oh my god, this is... I love this. I love this. There's... <laughs> Falcon and Sparrow since then, inside the marble... portico? 
portico of the Palais de Justice. Um, awaiting the opening of the tribunal. Sorry. Tribunal de Grand Instance. Are you nervous, Falcon? <laughs> I'm sweating, buddy. That bad, huh? <laughs> Mr. Falcon! Petite Sparrowson! Petite, sorry. Is there anything you need me to do? No, no. We've got a handle on things. Falcon was just telling me how confident he was feeling about the case. Oh, that's wonderful. I just know you two will pull through. Let's get moving along, fellas. Oh, I'll be watching from inside. Do your best for me, Mr. Falcon. We will. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. First trial! Woo! She! All right, settle down, everyone. Settle down. Is everybody here? AJ Falcon present. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, um, Rupert Rappington, uh, present. The ready is prosecution, Your Honor. Oh, ah, uh, darn, that's not it. Oh, gosh, where are my notes? Ha! I knew it! Knew what? Rupert and I went to Harris Law School together. He was in all my classes. Oh. Was he smart? Pfft, no. He always scored the second worst marks in the class. I could only assume that he bumbled through the final exams on the luck of his two rabbit's feet. Unless he's improved considerably, you might already have this trial in the bag. That's good to know. But, say, Sparrowson, if Rupert scored the second worst marks in the class, then who scored the lowest? <laughs> Me, obviously! Oh, actually... <laughs> Choose to exercise my right to not self-incriminate. Ah, there it is. <clears throat> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Are the jury all present? All present and account for, Your Honor. Hey, Falcon. I thought there were only six members of the jury for this case like this. Why do I count eight? Oh. Those two birds with the funny hats are assess- Ass assessors, the associate judges. Everything seems to be order, so let's begin. The court is now in session for the trial of Dame Catherine de Miao. De Miao. Prosecution, please call your first witness to the stand. Oh gosh, are we there already? Okay, um. I choose to call the officer in charge of the murder investigation, Inspector Valerdi, to the witness stand. Inspector Valerdi, please approach the stand and recite the oath. As you will, Your Honor. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Monsieur, no, um, Inspector, uh, please state your, uh, 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 name and occupation for the record. My name, <clears throat> my name is Inspector Just Valerti. I am a servant to the law, a scourge of the gutter rats that plagued the city. I have enforced the law for over 20 years, and I shall continue until I bring the infamous Viridian Keller to justice. My path begins 18 years ago. Let's stick to the questions, Inspector. Of course, Your Honor. Ah, great. I was hoping we could have one of those bumbling, cuddly officers. But instead, we're stuck with a lawful goody two-shoes. I bet this guy would turn his own mother if he saw her littering. So, uh, Inspector, is it true that you were the lead inspector on this case? That is correct. I was also among the first to arrive at the scene of the crime. 
Then perhaps you can walk us through what you witnessed upon your arrival? Absolutely. Just after 7.30, we were alerted and brought to the scene by the housemaid of Baron Rorgayi. At the scene of the crime, we found Dame Catalin de Miao. She was standing over the corpse of Monsieur Grenouille with his blood on her paws. Well, uh, that sounds like an open and shut case in my humble opinion. No, uh, no, no, uh, the, the, no, no more questions, Your Honor. Bloodied paws? Nobody told me that detail. Keep it together, Falcon. You're about to be given the opportunity to cross-examine the witness. That's your opportunity to find flaws in the inspector's testimony. Of course, I know this. You may begin your cross-examine, Monsieur Falcon. Wow! Okay. Select a key phrase that you find suspicious and Falcon will press the witness for information. Ask the correct questions to bring the truth to light. Avoid pressing for pointless details. The judge and jury don't like having their time wasted. Select a statement to question. Oh, shit! Huh. Blood on her paws. Inspector, you say Dame Catalina had blood on her paws. Correct. Blood clung to her fur like guilt to a convict. How much blood was there? How much blood was there on the lady's paws, Inspector? Enough for it to be clear that she had dirtied her hands on the victim's body. We noticed blood under the suspect's nails, around her fingertips, and even a little around her mouth. Her mouth! How vile! Hmm. The inspector's answer seems pretty definitive. Do you have another question about the blood on- Uh, yeah. Sure. Oh, whose blood was it? Whose blood was it? <laughs> what a question. It was Monsieur Grenouille's, of course. How can you be so sure? Um, uh, uh, I object. This line of questioning is absurd. There was only one murder victim that night, Falcon. The blood on Dame Catherine's paws could have only belonged to one person, Monsieur Grenouille. Judge, judge! Falcon's trying to delay the trial by asking pointless questions. I'm afraid the prosec- I'm afraid the prosecution may have a point, Monsieur Falcon. Do you have any reason to suspect the blood belonged to someone other than Monsieur Grenouille? I kind of do, actually. Because... Shit, where did it s We don't have evidence of- Aww. Uh... Oh yeah, 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 we do! Okay, okay. 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 I do! I do, your honor. Actually, I have more than suspicion. I have evidence that the blood on Dame Catalin's paws had nothing to do with the murder. This is foolish time-wasting, uh, Falcon. If the blood on Dame Catalin's paws didn't come from the victim, then where did the blood come from? The stake. On the evening of the murder, Dame Catalin... Ate a bloody, rare steak. Is this true, Mr. Rappington? Uh, well, I, um, in a manner of, uh, spe speaking, I, I suppose steak may have been on the, um, menu. Then, Inspector, would you acknowledge the possibility that the blood on the lady's paws did not belong to the victim, but to the steak? Well... Oh, wait, don't, uh, don't answer that, Inspector! It is a possibility. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Nice! So, Inspector Valerdi, is it possible that you arrested an innocent bystander simply for being a messy eater? Now, hold on one minute! Falcon, you 
are overlooking something quite crucial. Madame Catalin is an elegant bourgeois... Madame Catalin is an elegant bourgeois kitten. She was no doubt brought up with the flawless etiquette and um, perfect table manners. At the banquet, she would have eaten the steak with a fork in, on, in her left hand and a knife in her right, like any proper civilized animal. How can she have possibly gotten blood in, on her paws with such good manners? Oh, that is a good question. Or at least, it would be at any ordinary dinner banquet. But, as it happens, something was missing from that particular banquet. Something that forced Dame Cartelin to eat with her paws. Missing silverware. Dame Cartelin was forced to eat steak with her paws because... The silverware of the household had been previously stolen. Stolen? I don't recall any mention of that in the police report. We weren't aware of anything missing from the Rorgai residence when we performed the initial investigation. But as it uh, as it happened, Baron Rorgai approached us about this very subject last night. Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> What's the meaning of all this? Bloody steak? Misplaced silverware? Inspector, as was your inves in was your investigation so lax that you overlooked these basic facts in your initial report? Lax? My investigation? Judge, I assure you, I am the most thorough investigative officer on the force. Then it is amazing that the Parisian police managed to solve any crimes at all. <laughs> oh dear. Be on your way, Inspector. Perhaps do a little inspecting for your next case. Fine. So be it. Messieurs, until next time. Prosecutor. I trust your next witness is ready. Yes, yes, of course, Your Honor. I call upon, uh, uh let's see, um, Monsieur Robitio Rabinio, the, uh, photographer who attended the banquet on the night of the murder. Monsieur Robitio Rabinio, please approach the stand and recite the oath. How does it go? Uh, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's a little cliche, to be perfectly honest. Could the, uh, witness please introduce himself for the, uh, qu court record? <sighs> As if anybody in this courtroom does not immediately recognize me. I am the great Monsieur Robitio Robinio. Cutting-edge photographer and visionary. I don't just take people's pictures. I capture their very essence. Je suis l'artiste. Tu es un peep. Eh. Fuck. Eh. Oh, I got it, bitch. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> you may have seen my works in hip magazines like Le Branché or C'est Chou Chouette. I can send you tweets if you like. What on earth is a tweet? Bird to bird communication. Come on, Falcon, it's the 19th century. Get with the times already. Yes, yes, your works are very, um, impressive, Monsieur Robinio. But let's get down to business. 
Could you tell us your uh, activities were on the night of the murder? Very well. I was hired by Baron Rogo Yi to perform to capture the evening's events. I arrived at seven in the evening. I pointed my camera and captured the beauty of the banquet in one fantastic phonograph. Then I built Bar Baron, uh, the Baron, and left. Like a true artist. And uh, with regards to the photograph itself, uh, who did you photograph? I thought you might ask. I brought a copy so that you can all see for yourselves. Oh, very good. Let's take a closer look. My word. This is an exquisite picture, isn't it? So, let's see. Who do we have here? In the middle, we see uh, Baron Roger Yi, the lion who hosted the event. On the left, we see uh, Senor uh, Pertois de Miao, the father of the defendant, Dame Catherine. And finally, we see the uh, housemaid, Colleen Duhalt, who I suspect may have snuck into the picture uninvited. <laughs> Ugh. As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photograph. The first is the victim, uh, Monsieur Grenouille. The second is the defendant, Dame Catherine de Miao. Quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? Just a moment, Mr. Rappington. This proves nothing. So the defendant and the victim were not photographed with the others. That doesn't mean that they were in the garden together at that point. Hold your horses, Falcon. I'm not done yet. The prosecution may continue. Behind the photograph, uh, subjects... Behind the photograph subjects, we see a wall clock with a time set at uh, 7.30. Now, why is that time significant? Well, as M Inspector Validity told us before, it was just... Uh, it was the exact time the murder took place. Do you see, Falcon? Every suspect has an alibi at the time of the murder, save for Catherine herse herself. Hey, Falcon. That photograph doesn't seem right. It looks different from the one we borrowed from Robinho's studio. I see it too. Our photograph shows Coulin de Hot, Dame Catherine, and Seigneur Pertois. There's another one? Get the fuck out of here! Bitch. Being back again. Oh my god. You know, it's a good thing gnats are, um... <laughs> gnats are attracted to moisture. <laughs> they can only go so far. Also, hi, Ali! Welcome, welcome. <laughs> bougie cats! Plenty of bougie cats. But Mr. Rubino uh, shows Baron Rugui where Dam Catherine would be standing. If we assume that only one photograph was taken, then this demonstrates that one of the photographs must have been edited in some way. You should just slam the evidence down like BAM! Inconsistency! This whole courtroom is out of order! Case closed! I can't do that. Well, I suppose you could be a little more delicate with your words. No. I mean, I can't do that because our evidence was illegally obtained. If I were to present it, Monsieur Rubinio would ask how we acquired it and the whole trial could derail. <clears throat> In a worst case scenario, I could lose my legal license and we would be arrested for theft. Oh. 
Well, we don't want that. No. No, we don't. I should tread lightly. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Very well. The defense may proceed. <laughs> it's a waste of time, if you ask me. Photographs are rock-solid evidence. Hmm. I arrived at 7 p.m., set up my camera, and capture the beauty of the evenings. One magnificent photograph. I can't even look at it. <laughs> I can't even look at it in detail. Uh... Requested legal aid for his daughter. Yeah. Photographer. Red herring. Egg. Okay, I thought that was another one. God damn. Nope, it's just skin. <laughs> <laughs> but... French law. <laughs> ah! The missing clock! Oh. Uh I arrived at 7, set up my camera, and captured the beauty of the- I guess. <clears throat> Let's take a closer look at this photograph. Why is it black and white? <laughs> I was under the impression that photographs were flawless reproductions of reality, and yet I see something that is totally at odds with reality. It is a glaring error. It's something that's so blatant I am amazed it has been overlooked. A uh, uh, glaring error? Impossible! What you see, whereas reality is in color, this photograph is merely in black and white. Monsieur Flaukin, you're quite the foolish ludite, aren't you? There's no mistake. All photographs are in black and white. All of them? Yes. It's a limitation of photographic technology. No. Oh. <laughs> now I feel silly. You have another question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see a mistake. Uh, just to clarify, Mr. Robinio, photographs are a direct reflection of reality, are they not? That is correct! The photographic process leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. That is most curious. Because I see a mistake. A mistake? Impossible! I just told you, monsieur, the camera is a perfect, unbiased device. The photographs it produces are flawless. Falcon, I'm not seeing any, uh, mistakes. Perhaps you could be more specific? Certainly. Click on the area. Right here. <clears throat> the clock on this photograph. There's something not right about it. Oh, well, isn't that convenient? The defense sees something wrong with the, uh, key piece of evidence that implicates his client. Don't give me that cocky tone, Monsieur Rappington. I have evidence that there's something wrong with the clock in that picture. Boop. The photograph clearly shows the, hand, the clock's hands pointing at 7 and 6. That much is self-evident. Which is most curious, because the clock in the lounge of Chateau Cunier has no hands. It... it has no hands? The clock is merely a decorative piece, a talking item. Feel free to ask Baron Rogoyi for his housemaid, uh, or his housemaid if you have doubts. Mr. Robinio, how do you explain this discrepancy? I... I don't know. There must be some sort of mistake. My camera is flawless. There is no mistake, monsieur. Your photograph depicts something that does not exist. In the real world. Maybe there was an error in the printing process. An error precisely where the clock's hands should be? Please, monsieur, don't patronize us. Allow me to offer a more plausible explanation. You, monsieur Robinio, edited this photograph. 
Edited? I'm no expert, but I suspect that you used paint or ink to carefully put hands on the clock. It would have been a simple task, considering that the clock face was bare. One could even speculate that you specifically chose to include a handless clock in the photograph just to simplify the editing process. I... I... Falcon, your reasoning is absurd! Why would the witness do such a thing? Is it not obvious? By showing the photograph to have been taken place at precisely 7.30, it clears all the photograph subjects of suspicion. In other words, Mr. Rubinio created a perfect al al alibi. Of course, this raises further questions. Who is the witness protecting? And why? Why was Monsieur Rubinio coerced? Oh, was? Was Monsieur Rubinio coerced? Bribed? Threatened? Enough silence! Let's hear some answers, Monsieur Rubinio. Fine! You got me! I'm guilty! I did it all! You did it? You're confessing to the murder of Monsieur Grenouille? What? No, 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 I have no idea who killed the frog. I'm just admitting that I'm guilty of producing fraudulent photographs. I was ordered to make changes to the printed photographs. And yes, that included adding hands to the clock. You were ordered by whom? I... I dare not say. Monsieur Robinio, I strongly advise you to answer the defense's question. You have pledged to speak without fear, after all. With respect, Judge, I fear his claws more than I fear the punishment of the justice system. I shall name no names. His claws? Did you hear that, Falcon? That is most unfortunate. Monsieur Robinio, we cannot and shall not torture names out of you. We don't live under the ancien re regime, after all. And since you have admitted to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave. You shall be charged with perjury in due course. I can't protest. That's the least I deserve for my failure as an artist. Good day, messieurs. Yay! Yippee! So the uh, clock's hand were painted on. So what? It doesn't matter. The photograph still depicts Madame Catherine as absent, close to the time of the murder. That's significant. Don't be dense, Monsieur Rabington. If the photograph is not completely genuine, then it cannot be considered reliable evidence. Why not? It's still a portrayal of the, uh, night's events. Because if we accept that one part of the pi picture was edited, then we must accept the possibility that other parts were too. Is it possible that Ca Dame Catherine was painted out? Even worse, it is possible that Dame Catherine was painted out. Even worse, it is possible that another person was painted in. We know what, that the witness was trying to cover for someone, so all possibilities must be accounted for. So what are you saying, Falcon? That the housemaid paid off the photographer? Or was the Seigneur Pertoire de Miao, perhaps? I don't think so. The housemaid lacks some means or motive. And it wouldn't make sense if for Seigneur <clears throat> for Seigneur Pertoire to implicate his own daughter. Well, surely you're not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron Rorge Yi deliberately tried to frame Dame Catalan? Because that would be the most outlandish theory yet. The Baron is a pillar of our community. He would never do such a thing. Monsieur Rabington, I'm not here to throw accusations. That's the job of you, the prosecutor. However... Perhaps I should offer my opinion. Or mayhaps. B -b -b Baron, it's, it's not a t time for your witness testimony yet. 
So you would think, prosecutor. And yet I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your incompetence. Incompetence? Indeed. Let us proceed with witness questioning. Is that fine with you, judge? Yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good. And I trust that the defense has no objections. No. No objections here. Fantastic. Oh, but before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice, etc, etc. Now, prosecutor, ask me about what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Oh, well, okay. Um, Baron, Rorgei, uh, um, uh, on the um, night of the, um, the initial dinner went magnificently. When the photographer arrived, Mr. Grenouille left to visit the garden. Dame Catalin followed behind him moments later. Hello, Thunder. What's up? What's up? Senor Pretoire, Monsieur Roginio and myself were engaged in conversation, so we paid her no mind. After the photographer had left, my housemaid left to go find Monsieur Grenouille and Dame Catalin. That would be when I heard her cry for help. Uh, uh, thank you, Baron. I think we all know the story from there. I would like to cross-examine the witness. Do you doubt my integrity, Gaxon? I'm just here to uncover the truth, Baron. Very well, then. Hit me with your best shot. Let us establish with absolute certainty that I, Baron Rargayi, <laughs> I'm an honest man. It's such a difficult name. The defense may proceed with a cross-examination. Woohoo! Oh, dinner went magnificently when the photographer arrived. Monsieur Grenouille left to visit the garden. Dame Catalin followed behind. A few months later, my housemaid discovered the pair just after the photographer left and called for help. Cigar was found at the bottom of the bum can only be reached with a little waiting. Uh, the photograph well we can't use the photograph. Um uh, <laughs> this is a red herring. <laughs> I just noticed that. Uh uh-huh. Damn, we don't really have much right here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. seems a a mid mild case of kleptomania. Uh, mother and her bouncy daughter who begged us for money outside the chateau. Guy, him, him, wealthy father, defend in court, him. Wow, and there's even more. Uh. Delusional artist and photographer, someone described a video with a H word. That's right, you know the one. Uh, 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 hussy. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, one of the longest serving judges in France. Okay, we don't really need to know these guys. Okay. Mm hmm. Found murdered colleague of, uh, of those two. Has been accused of murdering him. Mm hmm. <laughs> Vertically enabled housemaid who works for Baron. Okay. Uh huh. Went and left to visit the garden. Housemaid discovered there just after the photographer left and called for help. Baron Rogoyi, I have a couple of questions about your housemaid, Colleen uh, Duhalt. Does she smoke? Does your housemaid smoke cigars? Hmm. Well, that question came out of the uh, left field. Definitely not. Mademoiselle Duhalt detests the smell of tobacco. I see. Putting together a bigger picture, are we? I think so. 
The pieces are slowly falling into place. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> On second thoughts, I, we've talked about the house made enough already, haven't we? Let's change the subject. Uh... Dinner. I would like to ask about the dinner you served that evening. Very well! Ask away. Regarding the stolen cutlery. Earlier today, we established that silverware was stolen from your residence prior to the banquet. Indeed. I'm aware of whom the culprit is, but I have decided not to press charges. It is curious, then, that you decided to serve steak. Isn't that one... Another one. Another one! Where are you coming from? It is curious, then, that you decided to serve steak. Isn't that what one would describe as finger food? It isn't what one would describe as finger food, after all. I don't know about that, Falcon. With the right attitude, all food can be finger food. Uh, there's nothing curious about it. Senor Pertois and... Oh, damn Catalin. Are vocal lovers of rare steak. I was merely suiting their needs. Besides, what um other choice did the Baron have, Falcon? Serve vegetable broth like a, a, a common peasant? Do be quiet, Prosecutor. You sound ridiculous. B sorry, Baron. You have another question about the dinner? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Guarding the red herring. Now, about this red herring. Yes, what about it? I'm not sure, but I feel like it is of vital importance to the case. Falcon, I just want to clarify this. Are you saying that you wish to pursue the red herring? <laughs> no, I'm not an idiot. No, on second thought, I suspect that the red herring may be a diversion. I'll leave it alone for now. That's a good call. The joke was starting to wear thin. <laughs> um, okay, what about the garden? Baron, we saw the murder scene, your garden, for ourselves. When was the last time you visited it? When was the last time you ventured into your own garden? As it quite happens, I have quite serious allergies. I haven't... Bruh. I haven't been in my own garden for years. Years, you say? Indeed. That's not right. Baron, I do not wish to call you a liar, but that claim does not hold up to scrutiny. Oh, no. and why is that? Because we have we have hard evidence that you have visited the garden recently. Balder Dash, my word is gold. Show the court this so-called hard evidence I've seen him. I've been in my garden. Uh, brother, this was found in your garden. To be specific, it was found inside the fountain basin. Right beside where the murder occurred. Uh, cigar butt? That's, uh, that, um, that, that could only belong to uh, anybody and... Prosecutor, please shut your mouth. I can speak for myself. Oh, okay, so sorry, Baron. That is indeed the remnants of one of my cigars. But I must apologize, Monsieur Falcon, for I misunderstood your initial question. You see, prior to the banquet, I haven't visited my own garden in years. But naturally, after hearing the housemates cry for help in the evening of the murder, I rushed outside. I was shocked and disgusted by what I, by what I saw. That must have been when I dropped my half-smoked cigar in the fountain basin. You see, Falcon, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. I would find that believable if the cigar were casually discarded. But as it happened, the cigar butt was found in the fountain's upper basin, a location that could only be accessed with great inconvenience. 
and a little paddling. The cigar butt was not dropped, but it was, it was deliberately hidden. There are any number of possible explanations. Are there? Because I can only think of one. That is, that's you, Baron Rorga Yi, deliberately hid your cigar butt to disguise your own illicit activities. Did I now? And what illicit activities would those be? You want me to spell it out? Fine. Let's put everything on the table. You, Baron Rorga Yi, murdered Monsieur Grenwi. That is what you were trying to keep hidden. Directly accusing me of murder? How shamelessly brazen. That is a ludicrous accusation, Falcon. The Baron is an upstanding citizen of the highest order. Your allegation is baseless. You have no evidence, no uh, uh, means, motives, or opportunity. No evidence? Thank harder, Mr. Rappington. Every piece of evidence points to Baron Rorgeri as the prime suspect. You want the means? The Baron certainly had the means. His lion claws are as sharp as a surgeon's blade. Gutting a frog belly would be trivial to him. Even Monsieur Robinio confessed just moments ago that he feared his claws. <laughs> Ridiculous! I would never threaten a man with that violence. You want a motive? The Baron had at least... Sorry, the music is just really loud. Holy... <laughs> You want a motive? The Baron had at least 10,000 francs worth of motive. By removing a business partner, the Baron's share of his railway company increased from one third to one half. This is preposterous! And finally, the Baron had an opportunity. No, he crafted the perfect opportunity. He arranged a small banquet with a very select number of guests. He was aware of the missing silverware, and yet he served steak, a food item that was that necessitates good cutlery. Why? To bloody the hands of his guests, of course. Then he hired an, hired an easily influenced photographer and staged a specific picture in order to build a perfect alibi for himself. Photographing the... Uh, Guests in front of a handless clock to make for easy editing is quite an ingenious plan, it must be said. Prosecutor, are you going to let the slanderous yarn go uncontested? Say something! Object! I, uh, uh... Oh, you're pitifully useless. After executing the murder, the Baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminatory def evidence. His finished cigar. He knew that leaving it, but he didn't have the time to properly dispose of it. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> but he didn't have the time to properly dispose of it. So, out of desperation, he threw it he threw it into his fountain out of the sight of his guests and stay snooping and any snooping police. I imagine the Baron was hoping to implicate Seigneur Pretoire de Miao, since that would ensure total control over his railway company. Alas, Dame Catalin was the first to happen upon the crime scene, so the Baron improvised. This is an outrage. Judge, I demand that you disbar this ranting lunatic. No! There is only one outrage here. That is, that a man like yourself is able to abuse his wealth and status to frame an innocent girl for murder. You're a bourgeois of the worst kind. How dare you, garçon? The utter nerve of a lying scumbag of a lawyer to accuse a philanthropist Ph philanthropist, my bad. Like myself of nothing so heinous. 
I'm nothing like the fat cat bourgeois. Bourgeois. I... I'm a respectable, hard-working capitalist. No. You're a ruthless man who would slaughter a dear friend just to reap a so Just to reap a few francs. You incredulous whelp. I ought to gut you right here, now, like... Like... Like a damned frog! Could... Could someone please restrain the Baron? I'm on it, Your Honor. Let's go, old man. To the conciergerie with you! Don't touch me, you filthy jackdaw! I can walk myself! Uh, this is quite a turn of events. Does the, uh, prosecution have anything to add? I, uh... I, uh, well, uh, in a manner of, um, speaking, uh, um, uh, uh, well, well, to be honest, uh, no. Then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. I ask that the animals at the court please be patient in this time. Falcon, that was pretty incredible! Thank you. I just hope it was enough. What do you mean? You just proved to Catalina's innocence. Innocence. We'll get not a guilty verdict for sure. Hmm. Sparrowson, I think you've misunderstood something important about the justice system. Hmm? What's that? I haven't proved anything. As lawyers, we cannot deal in proofs. It's just not possible. All we can do is organize the evidence and convincingly explain what it suggests. I haven't proved Damp Catalin's innocence. Oh, night Nessie! Thanks for dropping by! All I have done is demonstrate that there is a significant, possibil <laughs> significant possibility that she is not guilty. I'm not sure I understand the difference. We've reached a decision. In light of the recent revelations, it is clear that an error of judgment was made with the initial arrest. On that note, we unanimously find the defendant, Dame Catherine de Miao, to be... not... guilty. Yay! Yay! Mr. Falcon! Petit Sparrison! You did it! Yeah, I suppose we did, didn't we? We should head back to the office so we can celebrate properly. You did it, Falcon! I can't take all the credit. It was a group achievement. I'm so proud of you both. I'll go get one bottle of wine and three of our least dirty glasses. You are amazing, Monsieur Falcon. Oh, it was nothing. I very much like the way you pinned the murder on the Baron. That was an act of sheer, sheer genius. Well, I didn't pin anything. Sparrowson and I just worked at unveiling the truth given the facts of the case. Mr. Falcon, there's no need to be coy. The case is over. Play coy? Don't tell me you're actually being sincere. I'm completely lost. Oh, wow. I thought the goody-goody thing was an act, but you actually don't know? Well, alright, I'll spell it out for you. Oh no, she's showing her ankles. <laughs> I murdered Monsieur Grenouille. I saw him in the garden, all drunk and vulnerable, and I seized my opportunity. It was nothing personal. Just business, you understand? Business? To increase my papa's share in the train company, of course. My papa always said that the drunk old frog was the weakest link. 
Your confession doesn't make any sense at all. I found Baron Rargoyi's cigar butt hidden in the garden. Oh, I put that there. I suspect- I expected the police to find out, but I suppose that that was putting too much faith in the brains of a Paris- of Paris's finest. But Falcon proved that Monsieur Robinho's photograph was edited. It was edited. I wasn't in the picture because I was busy pay paying a visit to Monsieur Grenouille in the garden. My papa knew I needed an alibi, so he ordered Monsieur Robinho to paint me over Baron Rargoyi and to add, add hands on the clock. But that lazy artist didn't manage to finish altering either photograph by trial day. It's a good thing that Monsieur Falcon was so imaginative, because that could have gone very badly. What's with the silence? You should both be proud. There aren't many lawyers in the whole of France who would have won a case like this, even for a bourgeois kitty like me. I think you should leave. <laughs> Fine. So much for the celebrations. Here's the payment for your services, straight from my papa's pockets. Well, adieu, Monsieur Falcon. Adieu, petite. Petite. Sparrowson. Falcon, what do we do now? <laughs> Falcon? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> this is a fun game. I love this. What a great turn of events. <laughs> Ooh, the Louvre? Ooh! Let us be reasonable, senors, that I'm sure, uh, whatever. There's no misunderstanding in the king, in the name king, arrest that Spaniard! Uh-oh. Oh. So mad I never got around to playing it before. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I knew Falcon wouldn't feel like turning up to the office on Friday. <sighs> but now it's midday on Monday and there's no sign of him. This is becoming a little concerning. I should wait around a little. What am I saying? Falcon's a big bird. He can handle himself. <laughs> Keep waiting. Garrison can get it, get it hot damn. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah, just keep waiting. Keep waiting. You got it. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. It's fine. You're okay. I'm just wondering how long it'll take at this point. <laughs> we gotta see this. See this. Do I get an achievement <laughs> for this? <laughs> or is he gonna say something eventually? We'll find out. We'll find out. We got all day. Or all night. <laughs> no? Nothing? Nothing yet. I'm waiting. I am. We can literally be here all day. All day. <laughs> this this is peak gameplay. <laughs> peak gameplay. Hundred percent. Damn. Maybe there is nothing. But what if? <laughs> what what if? <laughs> you 
<laughs> Damn. I have not been counting. All it's missing is a fishing mini game. <laughs> you're right, you're right. And they're birds. So in some way they can fish for themselves. Okay, I'll do ten more. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. <clears throat> Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Damn, got nothing. Oh, psych! Damn. <laughs> Alright, fine. I should probably go find him. His home would be a good place to start. The bird brain never gave me his address. I'll just have to find him the hard way. Okay. <laughs> We're actually going through the entire place. Alright. <clears throat> Excuse me, monsieur. I'm looking for my friend. Do I look like a lost Vaudia? Buzz off, bird brain. Alright then. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Mademoiselle de Hot. Uh, down here. Oh, there you are. It's Sparrowson, right? That's right. I heard the, about the case you were involved in. I never would have thought that the Baron was a murderer. He always treated me with the utmost respect. But then, I suppose it makes sense that the most ruthless killers are the ones who can put up the best facade. Yeah, I suppose so. Say, how's your friend doing? He seemed a little down last night. Oh, you seen him? Yes, he was brooding in the corner of... Le Canard... Le Canard... J... 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 Oh no, I don't remember how this... J... 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 Uh oh. Mumbling and drinking. It was a little depressing, to be perfectly honest. Le Canard J... That's a... That's the dingy student bar on, on Rougeon, right? It's not dingy, it's a little- just a little rustic. In any case, that's an enormous help. Thanks, mademoiselle. Anytime, Sparrowson. Wow, great. Uh, let's just go there anyway, just in case. No sign of Falcon here. Uh, no sign of Falcon here. Excuse me, Rupert. Oh, it's you. The, uh, first year dropout. Hey, I didn't drop out. I was forcibly ejected. But that doesn't matter right now. I'm looking for Falcon. Have you seen him? Falcon? The guy who, uh, somehow blundered his way through the Catalan trial with the help of some, um, very dubious evidence? No, I haven't seen him since the, um, trial. Oh, well, thanks anyway. <laughs> nice. Sparrowson stepped through the doors of Le Canard, Le Canard Joyeux, the dingiest student tavern in all of Paris. His nostrils filled with the pungent aroma of sour wine and bitter tobacco. Well, ruffle my feathers if it isn't little Sparrowson. I haven't seen you since in years. How you doing, hon? I'm feeling pretty good, Matt. M Madame. Canel? Canel? Thanks for asking. Uh, I'm actually here to find a friend. Um, he's a big guy named JJ Falcon. Falcon? Yep, that sorry lump has been here all weekend. 
He's been moaning and muttering to himself all weekend. Frankly, he's bringing the whole atmosphere down. I'll take care of him. Thanks, Madam Cannell. It's no problem, hon. He's probably still in the corner in the drinking upstairs. Uh, <laughs> let's go into the card room anyway. Mm, here to play some Jock Noir, are you, monsieur? Not right now. I'm looking for my friend, JJ Falcon. Oh, that big drunk fellow. I think I spotted him downstairs. Ah, thank you. Mm. Mm. No sign of him. <gasps> Mon dieu! I almost stepped in a big fellow! The... Uh, Falcon? What are you doing on the floor? Hey, Falcon! Wake up! Wow, the bird's completely out cold. He must have drunk this place dry. Let's see, how do you wake a drunk person? <laughs> he deserves it. Well, I guess it's time for a rude awakening. Wakey, wakey! <laughs> ah, good. You're up. Are... Are you with us, Falcon? Yeah. Feeling sober. We should probably head back to the aviary office so we can get some work done. I don't understand it, Sparrowson. Huh? Thought I did everything right. I followed all the procedures. I found all of the evidence. I presented the case beautifully. And yet, a guilty feline walks free while an innocent man sits in custody. What went wrong? Where's the justice? We need to try harder. Maybe we need to, um, try harder? Try harder? I don't know if we messed up or if the system messed up or what, but... We just had to do our best as lawyers, I suppose. Maybe if we work hard enough, we can stop mess-ups from happening again. Sorry, Falcon. I don't have the answers. But I... But, what I do have is freshly baked croissants from Pierre's Boulangerie! Croissants? Yep. They're waiting for you back at the aviary. aviary. I'm sitting here, moping about justice, and you offer me... Quasso? Well, it's not just Quasso! I got some pain du chocolat too. Pa pain au... Pang o chocolat too. I could go for a pan o chocolat. Fantastic! Then let's make a move. All right. I admit it. These croissants are amazing. I told you, Pierre's boulangerie on Rue Vert is something else. I like how the streets are just straight up colors. <laughs> so far. Oh, that reminds me. The baker told me something interesting. Uh, do you know what they call pang o chocolat in America? They don't call them pang o chocolat? Nope. Pronunciation difficulties. American... American is a whole nother language. So what do they call them? Chocolate croissant? Um... Ah... Uh, hello? Huh. Chocolate croissant? Hmm, what do they call... Profiterol? Oh, I think they're still profiterol, but rather than custard, they fill them with ice cream and smother them with melted chocolate. Simply outstanding. Is this the aviary? <coughs> Sorry. Oh, is this the aviary attorney? Can I speak to someone? Please? Well, what do they call clips? Clip. Excuse me! Did you just hear something, Sparrowson? Down here! Oh. Sorry, I didn't see you there. 
Uh, what can I do for you, little one? Oh, uh, gosh, where to start? <laughs> Your name, perhaps? Mousy. My name's Mousy. Chocolatine eaters in shambles. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and what can we do for you, Monsieur Mousy? I have this friend. He has fallen under some legal turbulence. Legal turbulence? You mean he's been arrested? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Uh, they're saying he's a murderer, but he didn't do it. He didn't do it. That's quite a problem. I know! Oh, but I forgot to mention, he's the Prince of Spain. The Prince of Spain? And you didn't think that was worth mentioning from the start? I forgot, I forgot. Ugh, I must ask, Mousy. Why did you come to us? I would have thought that the Spanish royal fam family would hire legal counsel with a little more... Not terribleness? Expertise. Oh, uh, well, the prince had great faith in your lawyering skills, Monsieur Falcon. <laughs> uh, he said that your reputation as a, a lawyer was renowned. Really? The prince said that? This is a great opportunity, Falcon. Surely you wouldn't deny a quest from the Prince of Spain. Meh. <laughs> Meh? Meh. Look, Falcon, I know you're still upset about damn Catalin's trial, but more moping isn't going to help. The best thing you could do right now would be to occupy yourself with some meaningful work. This case will scratch that itch perfectly. Meh. I'm not gonna hear it. Grab your things. We're doing this case if we have to if I have to drag you by the sleeve. Alright, alright. No need to burp handle me. <laughs> No more dilly-dallying. Dilly-dallying. Let's go. Oh, good luck to you, messieurs. You aren't coming with us, Mousy? I have, uh... I have other matters to attend to. But Prince Juan is being held in the conciergerie. Uh, I'm sure he will fill in all the details. Alright, let's make a move then. Aha! <laughs> Good day, monsieur. Doll, oh, it's you two again. Hey, nice work on Lady Kitten's trial. Baron Rorgui is pacing around the cell right now, ranting about wringing your neck. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He's super mad. But hey, a criminal's a criminal, right? If the lion didn't want a death sentence, he probably wouldn't have killed the guy. Shouldn't have killed the guy. Oh, you're not here to defend him, are you? Because that would be hilarious. We're actually here to see Prince Juan... Juan Quier, Quier, Quierido. The uh, heir to the throne of Spain. The mouthy fox, huh? That guy's driving me nuts with his senores and his flamboyant attitude. I say the sooner he hangs, the better. Well, come on then. While we're young... Prince of Spain, I presume. Indeed, I am Juan Querido, heir to the throne of España, and you must be the legendary lawyer, Señor J.J. Falcon. Well, I wouldn't say legendary. I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't even say notable. Such humility. I would expect nothing less from renowned individuals such as yourselves. But let us get down to business. I trust that my com com compañero, uh, Mousy, explained the situation. He told us, <clears throat> he told us that you've been accused of murder, but we need some further details before we can start our investigation. Ah, <laughs> of course. What is it that you wanted to know? Uh, tell us about the murder. Uh, to be honest, Prince Juan, I'm a little confused as to how one member of royalty could get in such- in so much trouble. Could you walk us through your activities in the day of the murder? <laughs> of course. Let me see where to begin. 
It was the cold and misty morning of the 6th of January. I had heard that King Louis-Philippe was unveiling a new painting at the Palais du Louvre, and I wished to meet the man himself. So, after a brief stroll and picnic in Twi Tw Tuileries? Tuileries? Garden? I entered the palace. I found the royal entourage in the Louvre's Grand, Grand Gallery. Ga Gallery. Ga fuck it. <laughs> when I saw an opportunity, I presented a humble gift to the king. A rose. An international symbol of passion and virtue. Huh, how romantic. But before the king could take it, a rather... Rude person snatched it from my fingers. It was a royal guard. A dog by the name of Major Howell. Ouch, cried out Major Howell. I have pricked myself upon the thorns of this dastardly flower. And then the Major slumped to the floor. His face turned blue, his mouth frothed, and he died. He died straight away after being pricked? Straight away, senor. That's obviously- it's obvious that the pricked flower was the cause of death, but I don't know of any poison that acts so fast. Nor do I, Senor Falcon. But clearly, the police felt that poison upon the rose's thorns was a, the only logical explanation. And with so many witnesses, even the king himself, what could I say to defend myself? Where did the- <clears throat> so where did this rose come from? I acquired it from a beautiful Parisian flower seller at Le- Le- Le Al- Les Al- Les Al's market. A girl by the name of Catherine Marie Sign Sign. But surely you're not suggesting that the flower girl applied the poison herself, Senor Falcon. Well, I'm not making any accusations yet. I'm just planning to explore every line of inquiry. Yay! Major Howell took a rose from Pris Juan. The thorns of the rose were supposedly coated in poison. <laughs> Did you want to ask something else, Senor Falcon? Why are you in Paris? <clears throat> Why did you come to Paris, Prince Juan? I was on a diplomatic uh, mission. I do not know whether you are familiar with current events, but you may have heard that my country is in a state of turmoil. Contenders for the Spanish throne are slandering, plotting, backstabbing. It's chaos and the people are suffering. So I thought, if I can befriend some French royalty, perhaps even the king himself, maybe I can strengthen my family's name. With the Chiarido dynasty restored, I would have, I would have a chance at bringing peace to my beautiful nation. Well, I guess that plan's gone out of the window. Sparrowson, shut the fuck up. No, no, he's right. I failed miserably. D don't fret, Prince Juan. We'll do everything in your power to clear your name. Maybe once the dust has settled, you will have another opportunity to speak with King Louis-Philippe and complete your mission. Thank you, Senor Falcon. I'm sure you will do your best. Is there anything else? What were you reading? Second case? Yes, sir! Second case! What were you reading before we so rudely interrupted? Ah, this book? It is a Spanish classic. Don Quixote of La Mancha. You know it? <laughs> Readings for squares! <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry, I have to. <laughs> That's so funny. Sorry, Juan. I don't have the time for a reading in today's fast-paced world. That's a that's a shame, Senor. 
You're missing out on a fascinating tale of a one man's chivalry in a world where chivalry is dead. But if you don't care for reading, why do you ask about the book? Curiosity, I suppose. I see. Then I tell you what, senor. I will lend you this book. Perhaps, if your curiosity allows, you can take out something. Can I check a log? <laughs> No, I think that's everything. Thank you. What's the plan, Big Bird? Well, we have two lines of inquiry. We should head to the scene of the crime, the Palais du Louvre, and see if we can find any clues or witnesses. And we should interview the flower girl in Les Halles, uh, market to see if she has anything to say about this alleged poisoned rose. Two tasks spread over for six days? That almost sounds too easy. Let's not get complacent. Good luck, senores. Wait a minute, Falcon. What is it? Did something seem... off about Prince Juan to you? He's quite a character. He seemed colorful to me. Throwing roses, spouting about literature. Juan, Juan's one suave Spaniard. Hmm, maybe I misread him. Well, look, if this is bothering you, then we could always ask around. Maybe someone in the city knows Juan's dirty secret. If he really has anything to hide, that is. Yeah, let's dig up the dirt! But we've still got a trial to prepare for. Priorities, Sparrowson. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> This is on this is honestly so fun. I love this. Really, Falcon? I thought you were done with your mopey drinking. I'm not here to drink, Sparrowson. Or mope, for that matter. <clears throat> Taverns are a fantastic hub of information. If we wish to get to learn more about this Prince Juan, then this would be the ideal place to start asking questions. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty good thinking. Ah, you two are back. You feeling any better, Falcon? Much better. Thank you for asking, Madame Canel. <laughs> that's great to hear, hun. Will it be the usual? No, no. I'm back to investigate, uh, investigative work today, so I've got to keep sharp. We wanted to know if you've seen a prince of Spain around here recently. A <laughs> prince of Spain? I don't know if you noticed, hon, but this isn't exactly the classiest pub in Paris. I'm lucky to serve the, the occasional bourgeois. You know, you can forget about seeing a member of royalty. <laughs> That's a pity. Pity. Maybe I should ask some of your patrons. <laughs> Feel free! The old regulars, Rufus and Powell, are playing cards in the attic. Same as always. We get all sorts of colorful characters in the drinking room. But if you rattled enough cages, you would find someone who knows whatever it is you wanted to know. Thank you, madame. Let's see. Where to start? Let's play cards with some good pals. Come on, pal. It's just one more game with Jacques Noir. Absolutely not. My wallet is hurting enough as it is. Please, I'll even let you deal this time. The answers? No! Rufus, I'm skint. If you want to play cards, you'll just have to ask someone else. Fine, I'll ask that big fellow. Excuse me, monsieur. Yes, you, monsieur. Would you care to play some Jacques Noir? Uh, no. I like money. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have time for that, monsieur. I have some investigative work to take care of. Come on, surely you have time for one quick game. <sighs> well, I'll go on then. All right, all right, you've twisted my arm. Very well then. You know how to play? Yeah, of course, been playing for years. <laughs> yeah, right, don't get cocky, Falcon. Very good, I shall be the player. We'll bet five francs per game. Here we go. This is gonna be rigged. I- I- I'm telling you. 
four, nine, nineteen. Frank's richer. Oh, well played, Monsieur. Here's your payout. Now we have another. Well, no, I'm good. No, I think we're done. Maybe another day, Monsieur. I understand. Feel free to come back anytime. <laughs> that was cute. So there I was in the grasslands, ten kilometers downriver, rifle in hand. I've been pursuing this set of footprints for an hour. I was getting closer and closer. I could almost smell the beast. Then, I spotted it. Uh, wait, what? There's a lot of animals named Frank. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Uh, I ready my gun. I carefully took aim. Then, BAM! You shot it? No. It was the most peculiar thing. Or slumped over dead right before I could take the shot. Sounds like one of them heart attacks. Minan went the same way. Yeah, that's what I thought. But then I went to take a closer look. I noticed the boar was frothing at the mouth. Wow, was it rabid? Rabid? Hmm. Possible, but I don't think so. I remembered reading something about frothing around the mouth being a symptom of poisoning. Needless to say, I left the dead animal alone. Good call. Who wants to deal with tainted meat? Ask about the boar. Excuse me, monsieur. Yes, uh, can I help you? You say that the beast you were tracking might have died from poisoning. Could you give us some further details? Further details? I'm not much of a uh, poison expert, I'm afraid. Well, what do you think caused it? Uh, I would guess that it ate something bad. I saw some of that poisonous plant around. Wolf's Bane, I think they call it. But really, I have no idea. I'm a hunter, not a vet. Excuse me. Uh, ask about Prince Juan then. Uh, excuse me, monsieur. What is it? I don't suppose you've seen a Juan Quere Querido around here? Uh, he's Spanish royalty. Foxy fellow, swanky hat, calls everyone senor. That doesn't sound familiar. Do you recall someone like that, Piero? Ain't got a clue. Sorry, monsieur. Where you're barking up, barking up the wrong tree. Well, what can you tell us about the Spanish royal family? Do we look like walking encyclopedias or something? I'm afraid my com compadre has a point. If you want to talk about hunting, then I'm your man. But Spanish royalty? That sounds like a question to be answered at a library, monsieur. Not a tavern. A library? Maybe you're right. Sorry for bothering you, monsieur. Let's give them some space. <laughs> Let's go back to the entrance. Are we ready to hit the road? Yep. Let's make a move. It's a new dawn. I'm on Ima. I'm on Ima. Wait, why? What do you mean? Uh. Yeah, let's go to. Bibliotheca Here for a little light reading, are we? Not quite, Sparrison. I'm following the hunting beagle's advice. Don't eat poisoned pork? The other piece of advice. That if we want to learn about a member of royalty, we should hit the library. Oh, that makes sense. Say, Falcon, I've been meaning to ask. Since we're in a library and all, are you a classic literature fan, or do you prefer more modern works? <laughs> I'm a man of my word. Readings for squares. Reading is so blasé. Give me a good modern opera any day. Good call. Nothing beats a well-made show. Speaking of which, 
I hear they are performing La La Dam Damnation of Faust Faust uh, at the Opera Comique. Op Opera Comique. Uh, I would sell my soul for front row tickets. Would you, Monsieur's mind lowering your vo lowering your voices? I can hear your squawking from the other side of the building. Ah, uh, my apologies, Monsieur. We'll keep it down. Wait, you're a librarian, aren't you? An astute ob ob observation. Yes, Monsieur. I, uh, as the only quiet person in the library, I am most assuredly, assuredly, the librarian. Well, now that we have your attention, my friend wants to ask you something. I do? Oh, right, I do. <laughs> uh, can you tell him about Don Quixote? I borrowed this book from a friend. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Don Quixote of La Mancha? That's a classic. Everybody has read it. Yeah, everybody, but for those who haven't... I'm not gonna sit here and summarize a great work of literature for two imbeciles who are too lazy to read. Nor do I expect you to, monsieur, but what can you tell us about the physical book itself? This particular book didn't come from any library, if that's what you're asking. See? There's no library stamp or card. I assume it was acquired from a bookshop. A French bookshop, if the French translation and the publishing information wasn't a giveaway. I see. Thank you. You have any questions, or can I get back to work? I missed. <laughs> Bleh. Interesting. <laughs> Page 44 seems to be missing. Very interesting. Can you tell us about the Spanish monarchy? Seem like a scholarly, scholarly well-read individual. I'm sure you're up to date on geopolitical news and the like. I don't need your praise. Spit out whatever imbecilic question is in the back of your throat. Uh, well, we understand that the Spanish throne is currently under dispute. Can you give us a brief rundown on who the contend contenders are? What a trivial question. Even an elementary school child can name the immediate heirs to every throne in Europe. N yeah, but for the sake of those children who slept through that class, can you refresh our memories? <sighs> Very well. Pay attention, because I'm not repeating myself. The current reigning monarch of Spain is Queen... Re... Regnant Isabella II of the House of Bourbon, daughter of King Ferdinand VII. Upon her death, the crown would likely fall to her husband, King Consort Francis, Duke of Cadiz. Although it is certainly possible that an immediate family member could take a stake a claim. However, the Queen's position is currently being disputed by Carlos, headed by the Count of Mont 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 I hope that answers your question. Did you catch all that, Sparrowson? Not a word. Monsieur, you're, you're actually in we're actually interested in a uh, Prince Juan Querido of Spain. I don't think I've heard that name in your explanation. Prince Juan Juan Querido? Is that what you said? Monsieur, I think you've been misinformed. There is no current of Spain, and I'm not sure Querido is a real name. It is certainly no line of any Spanish monarchy. Eh, uh, how strange. What does this mean, Falcon? Well, one thing is for sure. Our client is not the Prince of Spain. Maybe he's a delusional lunatic. Or perhaps he's, he's involving us in some sort of con. I don't have the long before the, we don't have long before the trial, but it may be in our interest to confront 
Prince Juan directly and get some answers. Right. You two... Are you two quite done chit-chatting? Don't worry, monsieur. I think we're done here. Thanks for your time. <laughs> and I bid you good day. Love their, this librarian guy. Mm. Pretty fun dude. Falcon and Spearson make their way to the Palais du Carousel, the courtyard just north of the Louvre's Grand Gallery. Oh, that's the Arc de Triomphe over there, right? I swear, it's smaller than how I remember it. That's the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, you doofus. The big arc, the triumph is up, is up the road. What? No way! Why are there two? Because when a man like Napoleon invades half of Europe, he gets to build as many triumphal arches as he damn well pleases. Well, well, well! I never expected to see you here, JJ. That arrogant voice. Ah, <sighs> good day, Severin. Let's be civil, JJ. Why don't you introduce me to your new assistant? Fine, fine. Severin, this is Sparrowson, my assistant. Sparrowson, this is Severin Cocorico, the most pompous prosecutor in Paris. Oh, are you two old school friends or something? More like arch rivals. Please, JJ. I think arch-rivals imply some sort of competition. As I recall, we've met in court on five occasions. Uh, and on five occasions, did you get humiliated terribly? I'm amazed a failing bird brain like you is still able to get clients. Actually, Severin, business has never been better. I'll have you know that I'm currently being employed by the Prince of Spain, no less. The Prince of Spain? Juan Querido? Well, well, this is quite an amusing coincidence. Don't tell me. Correct. I am the prosecutor for the very same case. It is a pity that the Spanish Prince would indubitably hang. But, I suppose that is what he gets for hiring a bird brain to represent him. Don't call me bird brain. You're the only bird brain here, Severin. <laughs> one always speaks badly when one has nothing to say. Voltaire. Uh-oh, he's giving you the verbal smackdown. Quick, Falcon, make a witty retort. Huh? Oh, yeah, uh... Uh... Uh, to mare. <laughs> uh, the, I don't agree with your right to. Uh, wait, I agree with what you say, but. Oh, dear. <laughs> You're the same bumbling fool you've always been, Falcon. But enough talk. If you messieurs would excuse me, I have a case to prepare for. JJ, Sparrison, I'll see you two in court. Ugh, I can't stand that guy. He didn't seem like a... He did seem like a bit of a cockerel, but is it true what he said? You know, that he trounced you in court five times? I can't deny it. Severin has a reputation as a ruthless, thorough prosecutor. Mountains of evidence, surprise witnesses. It's no wonder he always manages to one-up me. This time will be different, right? I hope so. I know so, for you see... I stole this annotated map of the Louvre out of Kokoriko's pocket when he was busy rattling off Voltaire quotes. Sparrison, that's... 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 Pretty impressive, actually. I swear you were standing three meters away the whole time. You tall birds are so busy with your hands in the heads in the clouds that you don't ever notice us small folk running around your feet. 
pinching Kokoriko's pocket was like taking candy from a very tall baby. Let's take a closer look. I see. This map shows the entire Louvre area. Everything from Tuileries to the Rue de Louvre. Most convenient. We're currently standing here in, in the plastic carousel. Those penned in arrows seems to show the route taken by the king's entourage. Which means that the king first went here through the Salle de Tibre. And then here to the Grand Gallery where the murder occurred. Didn't Prince Juan say he spent the morning in the Tuileries Gardens? That's right. So that means Prince Juan approached the Louvre from the west side. Somewhere over there. Sounds like we got a lot of places to visit. Where should we go first? I mean, let's... <laughs> Let's just go right to le or left to right. Our feathered headed friends wandered through the immaculately maintained Tuileries Gardens. Nothing seems out of the ordinary until they spot a familiar face picking up litter by a tree line. Hey, Falcon, doesn't that groundskeeper over there look familiar? Yeah. Now that I'm looking at him, he does look a lot like that photographer. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Bono Baghetto. <laughs> Bono Baghetto! That's not his name, actually. I'm pretty sure that's not anybody's name. He just spewed out of words, too. <laughs> Try Rubino Rubinio. Hmm? Does someone call me? Oh, it's you. The lawyers who don't appreciate a masterful photograph when they see it. It's good to see that you gave up on your artsy dreams to pursue the more grounded career of groundskeeping. Hey, I'm not doing this willingly. I was given community service for committing perjury. Can you believe that? They gave me, an esteemed photographer, community service. Me! Yeah, I can believe that. Perjury is somewhat serious. You should be thankful that you got off without jail time. <laughs> you should just like you sound just like that half right self righteous judge Maxime. So, did you two want to talk, to ask me something, or are you just here to gop? Personally, I'm just gopping. Actually, I do have a couple of questions if you don't mind, Monsieur Robinio. Have you met a Prince Juan? I don't suppose you bumped into a Spanish fox who goes by the name of Prince Juan, have you? Spanish fox? No, I've never met anyone like that. If this is about that assassination attempt on the king, then you're asking the wrong person. I only started working here today. I see. Is there anything else you wanted? How's, how's the groundskeeping going? So, uh, how's the new groundskeeping job working out? Terrible. Tourists are pigs. Sometimes literally. Look at all this rubbish I found. Beer bottles, tin cans, apple cores. And look what I picked up by the west entrance. A book page. A whole book, I would understand, but a single page? What kind of blithering moron loses just one page? Wait a moment. Can I take a closer look at that, monsieur? Don Quixote. That's the page from Don Quixote. Can I take it off your hands, monsieur? Sure. What's it worth to you? What's it worth? It's trash. It's literally worthless. Then I suppose I'll be destroying it as per my duties. Alright, alright. I suppose you deserve a little compensation for your trouble. How about you give me the page and... I'll speak with Judge Maxime. Put in a good word and might be able to get your sentence reduced. Really? You'll do that for me? Thank you, monsieur. I would really appreciate that. Here, take the page. Wow! Page 44 of the L in. in. 
ingenioso, ingenioso Hidalgo Don Quixote de la Mancha has been added to your evidence folder. You want to ask something else? That's all. Something is already wrong. Apparently it's right. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, cool. Let's go to the carousel. Are we done here? Are we all done here? No. Not just yet. Pass me that map. Here we are. The Grand Gallery, the murder room. I believe the murder occurred right under the new painting. I see hundreds of paintings. Which one's the new one? I haven't the foggiest. You will have to ask someone. Please don't talk to me. Please don't talk to me. Excuse me, monsieur. You look like you know your Mona Lisa's from your last suppers. Attention. Maybe he isn't talking to me. Oh, he's definitely talking to me. <sighs> Keep it together, Eric. Oh, uh, bye! Would you happen to know which painting was unveiled on the 7th of January? The one the king came to visit. Oh! Yeah, I can help you with that! It's a piece right behind you! Ah, I see. It's the painting of the king himself. That's one noble-looking penguin. What do you think of it, Falcon? What do I think? Well, I'm no art critic, but... Subtle and nuanced. Careful brush strokes, the pre raffalettes soft tones, and the subliminal use of light. Does this contrasted nuanced work? It's an, ev it's an evocative painting that alludes to a forgotten era. I said a lot of words, but I'm not sure if I'm any closer to knowing your opinion. Getting the impression that you and Messieurs aren't regulars at art galleries. No. We are a right pair of Philistines. Speak for yourself, Falcon. Never even been to the Middle East. Then I'm guessing you're here to investigate the King's assassination attempt. That's right. We're actually hoping we could ask you a couple of questions about what you saw. No, I wasn't even in Paris when the murder took place. I didn't see anything. Oh, but, um... I have a friend who might be able to help you out. What's this? R&M Associates, the home of Renard Volpes, private investigator? Thank you, but I don't normally deal with these gray area of the law types. Oh, please get the guy a chance! He helped me out of bind bef he helped me out of a bind before, and I'm sure he can do the same for you. Well, I'm not making promises, but I'll keep hold of the card. We appreciate the help in any case. It's no trouble. Just don't talk to me again next time. <laughs> Thank you for your time, monsieur. Is there anything else we can do here? Well, ideally we would return to the whole uh grand gallery upside down. We could turn the whole grand gallery upside down in our hunt for evidence. But that's not possible with so many people around. We should probably just move to another room. So, this is the sound de Teeb. If I understood Kokoriko's notes correctly, this is the room the king and his entourage stopped in before heading to the grand gallery. This room doesn't seem to be very popular. I don't see anybody around to interrogate. Interview. Right. Interview. Well, since it's quiet, maybe we should take the opportunity to do a little snooping. And what would be the point? Surely all the interesting evidence would be in the Grand Gallery, where the murder took place. Think about it, Falcon. The police would have already gone over the Grand Gallery with a fine-tooth comb. But, I bet, 
That numbskull inve Inspector Volarity didn't even think to check this room for clues. There might be a murder weapon just under our beaks. Your logic seems a little questionable, but it couldn't hurt to have a look, I suppose. Hello? <laughs> Not sure what this is. Some sort of stand or podium? Maybe it's just a decorative piece. It's a Roman doorstop. Roman doors are enormous marble slabs, so the doorstops have to be similarly large in order to stay in place. Uh, I don't think that's right. My uncle's a Roman historian. Trust me. Source. A shiny copper urn. I guess it was used for carrying water or, or cremated remains. Probably not both at the same time. Smells good. Don't sniff the exhibit, Sparison. No, really, this urn smells amazing. It's almost chocolatey. You poor thing. You're hallucinating from hunger. Would you like to stop by a bakery on our way back to the office? Don't patronize me, Falcon. My nose never lies. I'm telling you, there's something in there. I can feel it. Now you're touching the exhibit? That's definitely a no-no. See? Look what I found in the urn! Put that down, Sparison. That's someone's old rubbish. No, look! It's a chocolate wrapper! Judging by the smell, the chocolate was bitter and dark. S 70, perhaps 80% cocoa? Belgian in origin. The level of wrapper rumpling all the fir and the firmness of the chocolate residue indicate that this was discarded just a few days ago. Yes, I'm certain. The chocolate contained in this wrapper was undoubtedly consumed the 7th of January, the day of the murder. On your Sparison, you deduced all that from smelling the wrapper? Imagine what I could work out if I tasted it. That won't be necessary. Sparison, if you could apply this level of critical thinking to areas outside of fool food, you would be the world's greatest detective. If only all evidence were edible. So, do you have any idea which shop this chocolate was uh, purchased from? That might help us track down the person who consumed it. No, there's no possible way we could know that. I suppose we will just have to visit every confectioner in town and sample every bit of merchandise for comparison. What a chore. Interesting. Because I can see Lander ha Hagelslax Chocolate Emporium written on the wrapper. Oh, well, you can't blame the bird for trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. These combs have been designed to look Roman. I think the style is like, Ionic. It's not Ionic, Falcon. Ione is when a character says something, but the reader knows it means something completely different. That's not... Never mind. <laughs> See a cabinet full of engraved plates. Mostly bronze. How much do you think they're worth? I don't know, 300 francs a piece at least. What? You serious? I'm in the wrong profession. I don't think archaeology works as a get rich quick schemes. Oh, I don't think archaeology works as a get rich quick scheme, Sparrowson. Who said anything about archaeology? I'm gonna become a museum robber. Oh. Well, that's one way to get rich quick. <laughs> Yo, Sparison is such a real one. <laughs> this is some sort of ceremonial container. Uh, it's beautifully crafted, but what did it contain? Maybe it's an arcane wine cabinet? Don't be so ignorant, Falcon. This is a sacred Mesopotamian artifact gifted to Emperor Hadrian for... His victory at Euphrates uh, in 123 AD. Stop making stuff up. You and I both know nothing about Mesopotamia. <laughs> alright, alright, you got me. This could be Hippo's chamber pot for all I know. <laughs> 
an agent of chaos. Yeah. Hundred percent. Supporting column. It's holding the roof up. If the column were truly supportive, it wouldn't hold the roof up. It would encourage the roof to get to its location on time. <sighs> oh my goodness. Anything else? Scanning. 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 I think we're good. The uh, we're done here for now at least. Can't spend all day staring at Roman artifacts, I suppose. So, where to next? I guess, yeah, that's pretty much everywhere. Are we all done here? Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's make a move. Good call. We can always come back later if we've forgotten something. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Don't fucking do this to me. There's even more stuff! Uh... We're gonna go to the hall first. The pair arrive at Les Hall Market. Benders and buskers, performers and thieves, bourgeois and peasants all bustle from place to place. Prince Juan said he met a flower girl here. Sign, I think he said her name was? There's a swan with flowers over there. You wanna... do you think that's her? I think so. It's possible that she knows the murderer, or even that she is the murderer herself. So we should probably act with tact and finesse. Excuse me, Mademoiselle Flower Lady! We would like to have a word! Tact, Sparrow said. Tact! We've been over this. Good day, messieurs. Are you interested in purchasing a flower? Yes, I wish to purchase a rose from a lady. I'm afraid I'm out of roses. I sold my last one a week ago. Perhaps you would be satisfied with a chrysanthemum? Uh, instead? Tis a beautiful flower for a fair, from a fair maiden. Please don't mind, Sparrowson. He fell out of his nest as a baby and he has said dumb things ever since. Hey! Let me introduce myself. I am JJ Falcon, defense attorney. Are you Mademoiselle Sign? That's right. Catherine Marine Sign. I suppose you're here to ask about the royal assassination attempt? How did you know? I am no fool, monsieur. I know that a rose I sold was used as a murder weapon. To be honest, I'm surprised it's taken so long for someone to directly question me. The Parisian police seem to have ha a habit of missing obvious leads. So, do you mind if we ask you a question, uh, a couple of questions? Business is slow. Please, ask away. Who bought your last rose? Mademoiselle, you mentioned that you sold your last rose a week ago. Who did you sell it to? A person who bought the rose. Can't catch his name, but he was a charming red fox. Sounds like our Juan. I met him around a week ago on the 6th. Excuse. Oh boy. Okay, I think that's all of it. We talked for a little while. But the usual things, about the usual things, you know? Like how everyone seems to be in debt these days. Then he bought a rose and left. After that, the fox is on... I hear that the fox is on trial, but to be honest, monsieur, I don't think he's guilty. Oh? And why's that? Well... Actually, never mind. It's just a gut feeling. Pressure her! Mademoiselle, it just so happens that we're defending this particular fox in the Cour de... Uh, the... The Cis... The Cis? If you have anything... If you have something to say that could prove his innocence, now would be the time to let us know. I'm sorry, messieurs. I can't. Wait. Mademoiselle Sign. Wait up. 
Damn. Nice display of tact and finesse, Falcon. You scared her off! The swan obviously knows something crucial about the case. We need to get to the bottom of whatever it is. Agreed. But I don't think she'll be in the mood to tell us anything uh, uh Yeah, anything else. I know. Why don't we try acting with a little more tact and finesse last time? Hush. <laughs> uh, okay. Now we can go to the... Oh, cinematic scenes are only available for one day before disappearing, but they... No time to visit. Their viewing is entirely optional. Wow. Oh, it's this one? Oh, entirely optional. How many days do I have now? <laughs> I never- I didn't count. Either way- Oh! I mean... <laughs> I saved! Special cinematic scenes right here will pop up on the map screen. Cinematic scenes are only available for one day before it disappears, but they take no time to visit. Oh, they take no time to visit? Okay. Might as well. Wow! Storm is brewing, my brother. Word of the royal assassination attempt has spread. The pro, pro that one grow confident the bourgeois are cowering. It won't be long before we have rioting. Then a revolution. Oh. And they're foxes. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to Lander Hagelsvaks Chocolate Emporium, the finest Belgian chocolate shop in all of Paris. I am Lander Hagelslak, the founder and owner of this establishment. I've been transported to the cinema, I'm watching a movie. <laughs> and I'm JG Falcon, defense attorney. Good day, monsieur. Ah, law lawyers. Very fancy, fancy. I must say that I once dreamed of being a lawyer, but, well, circumstances wouldn't allow it. It's a funny story. You see, when I was a young boy, I befriended the son of Hungarian attorney. How can you have to save me or help me? What is it? It's the smell, Falcon. It's overpowering me. It's demanding that I lay waste to the shop. For pity's sake, restrain yourself, Sparrison. <laughs> oh, but I'm rambling, aren't I? So, are you, messieurs, here to buy some chocolate? Yes! No, 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 no. 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 We're actually here on business, monsieur. Business. First things first, we believe that this chocolate wrapper originated from your shop. Are we correct? Oh, yes, yes. That is indeed the trademark uh, Hagoslak uh, wrapper for genuine Belgian Hagoslak chocolate. This was almost certainly bought from this very establishment. Very good. With that establishment, there is something else we wish to ask, Monsieur Hagelslag. Ooh, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Can you tell us who bought the chocolate that was that was contained in this wrapper, uh, Monsieur Hagelslag? I'm afraid not, Messieurs. Not just uh, because of matters of confidentiality, although that is a factor. You understand, but. Because I couldn't possibly know that. I thought elephants never forget. My memory is impeccable, monsieur. But you must understand that I have dozens of customers a day. There are hundreds of people who would have potentially bought this particular item. 
Hmm, so your memory is good, but you need further information. If we were to give you the description and name of a person, would you be able to tell us whether they purchased something from you? Ah, oh, yes, yes, that would pro I that I could probably do, monsieur. Mm, let me think. Who to ask about? Uh, <laughs> none of these. Um, uh, probably... <laughs> Damn. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh... Maybe he's afraid of hurting people if he gets too close. Uh, I mean, have you ever served uh, Don Querido, the Prince of Spain? A uh, Prince of Spain? No, Monsieur. Oh, that's good to hear. Our clue would have turned into a dead end if our own client turned out to be the Chocolate Fiend. I did once serve a princess from Mali, if that is any help. You see, I met the girl while hiking through the Himalayas. Please stop. Let me think. Um, who to ask about? Uh, Major Howell. Have you ever ser served a member of the Royal Guard by the ma name of Major Howell? No, Monsieur. You sure? Yes, Monsieur. I have served many soldiers, but I... Don't recall seeing a major here in recent memory. What does that mean, Falcon? Have we lost our lead? Not necessarily. It just means that Mr. Ma major Howell didn't buy the chocolate that may have killed him. There's still the possibility that someone bought the chocolate for him. That's our lead. That's who we want to find. Let's see. I did once serve a high-ranking officer of the British army who was on his way to Zimbabwe, if you want to hear that story. No, I don't want to hear that story. Mm, let's ask about her then. Have you ever sort of uh, served a flower-selling swan named Catherine Marie Sign? No, monsieur. Mm, what are you thinking, Falcon? Not sure, to be perfectly honest. If she were the chocolate fiend, then our investigation would have become much simpler. But since she's not... Messieurs, I'm growing tired of these endless inquiries. Perhaps you should come back another day. You know, Falcon, it's possible that we just haven't encountered the chocolate fiend yet. Rather than coming back here every day and making aimless guesses, we should wait until we have someone specific in mind. Might have a point, Sparrowson. Thank you for your time, Mr. Agleslag. We shall return when our investigation has progressed a little. Anytime, messieurs. Fuck. I wasted a day. Uh, let's check back the conciergerie since... You again. Visiting hours are over. Come back later. I have no time for your quilling, monsieur. Stand aside. You can't talk to me like that. Most certainly can. We have reason to believe that you are housing a suspect under false pretenses. That is in direct about, uh, violation of Statutes 204B and 488C of the French Criminal Code of Justice. Failure to comply with our request may result in you, yes you, monsieur, being held directly responsible for any consequential legal action. Alright, alright. No need to break out the legal lease on me. I'll go open the cell! Wow, Falcon, how did you memorize those criminal codes? I didn't. See? <laughs> memorize. Come on, Sparrowson, learn how to bluff. <laughs> ah, Senor Falcon. It is so good to see you again. You have some good news about my case, I hope? Confront politely. Listen, Juan, in order to maximize our chances of a successful trial, I need to know every bit of information. 
can't work with half-truths. If you tell me one thing, and the prosecution's evidence tells me another, then we're both in trouble. I'm afraid I don't quite follow, senor. You want me to spell it out? I know that you're not the Prince of Spain. I know that your name is not Juan Querido. Where is this coming from? I assure you, senor, that I am uh, who I claim to be. If you want your trial to be farce, then you don't need my help. Come, Sparrowson, we're leaving. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, mm, ah, mm. Calm yourself, Monsieur Falcon. I'll reveal all. Did you just say Monsieur? What happened to your Spanish accent? Your suspicions are well placed. Juan Quierido is not my real name, and I am not a Spanish prince. That was just a persona I concocted for the purpose of getting arrested. Why would you want to get arrested? Hmm. <laughs> You're putting me in a difficult position, monsieur. If I tell you the full story, I would be putting someone else in danger. How about this? I'll tell you a story. I like stories. It was a girl. A mademoiselle who was in a great deal of debt. Someone has a debt these- everyone has a debt these days, monsieur. Indeed. But this particular mademoiselle was in debt to a very powerful man, and that man wished to collect. The mademoiselle had no means of paying, so the man offered her a deal. Murder this man, and I will forget what you are owed. Refuse, and I will reap what I am owed from your parents. With no alternative options, the mademoiselle accepted. But another man, a gallant knight with foolish, archaic notions of chivalry, heard the mademoiselle's story. The knight knew that murder was inevitable, but he saw a way to take the fall in the mademoiselle's place. Do you understand what I'm saying, monsieur? I have no idea what you're on about. <laughs> to be honest, I'm completely lost. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I thought I made the message fairly clear. Well, it doesn't matter. Let me give you a piece of advice, Mr. Falcon. Sometimes, the problem doesn't lie with the one on trial. Sometimes, the problem lies within the justice system itself. I'm still lost. Me too. Oh, dude, this is hopeless. <sighs> Why don't we talk about something else? What's your real name? What's in a name? It's just an empty label. A vapid, vapid reflection of who we really are. Today I am Juan Querido, the Prince of Spain. Tomorrow I may be Bruno Rayer, a pauper living under a bridge of the Seine. But that doesn't change who I am or what I do. That... that didn't really answer my question. No, I suppose it didn't. But you're a smart bird, Mr. Falcon. I suspect you already know my real name. You are Renard Phelps, private investigator. Very astute. And you are Mr. Falcon, private defense attorney. But that wasn't always your name, was it, Mr. Falcon? Just like me, you know how to adopt a new persona on a whim. You changed your name, Falcon? I didn't know that. This isn't about me. Juan, Bernard, Monsieur. We're trying to uncover the truth here. Of course. So what truth is it that you're attempting to uncover? Uncover, Monsieur Falcon. I don't have any more questions for you, Juan. I think we've learned all we can for now. Really? I feel like... I feel that we've learned... I don't feel that we've learned very much. No, oh, Monsieur Falcon. Before I forget... Could you find Mousy and tell him whether the birds have successfully flown south for the winter? Whether the birds have flown south? What is that, some sort of code? Something like that. Let's rest assured, Monsieur. 
that this does directly pertain to the case. Well, if we have time, I'll be sure to let Melcy know. Trial day is approaching. Right. I don't remember when trial day is. Once again, Falcon and Sparrowson find themselves waiting outside the doors of Tribunal in the Grand Instance. You feeling nervous, uh, Falcon? Yeah. Of course I'm nervous. What if we learned about Prince Juan? What do we know about the real murder? Nothing! Easy there, Falcon. We can do this. <laughs> Ah, Senor Falcon. I trust everything is in order? Absolutely. I have every intention, intention of bringing the truth to light on this trial. Ah, such confidence. It's magnificent to see. And bringing the truth to light, you say? An admirable, an admirable goal. No more jousting at imaginary giants. All of you, cease your yammering. The door is opening. Here we go. Buena suerte, Senor Falcon. We will. Are we ready? We're ready. No, I'm not ready. I'm tired. <laughs> JJ? Suffering? Nervous? Why would I be nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm calm as a cuckoo. You're the one nervous one. This whole courtroom is nervous. Whoa, cool your feathers, Falcon. <laughs> Terrible. You can't even maintain a stoic facade. I thought this trial would be the perfect opportunity for you to redeem your previous em embarrassments. But if this is how you act before the trial has been even started... Why, you pompous tail posture perfect... Oh! Interesting. It's the guy from the cinematic. <laughs> Did we not win last time? We won, but we also lost. <laughs> You would know. But anyway, no, I... We gotta save this for next time. I am so tired right now. <laughs> I am not going to function, unfortunately. My, my brain is not ready for this trial. But yes, thank you for so much for, for uh, joining. Hanging around, sticking around and all that stuff. Uh... Surely there's no conflict of interest here. <laughs> True. But yeah, this is a... Aviary Attorney is... It's very fun. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm definitely gonna be... Playing, uh, playing some more. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch you some... Time. Eventually. Hopefully within the week. But yeah. Night. Enjoy the rest of your time zone.